Yeah, my name is Seth Breedlove, and uh, I run a company called Small Town Monsters that makes documentary content, feature films, YouTube, um, about cryptids and the paranormal around the United States. Yeah. I don't know. Someone just asked me this. I know it's over 20. Um, but the movies, I don't, I don't, it's maybe 21, 22, some, somewhere like that. But my problem is, we're already filming stuff for 2023. We haven't even finished releasing 2022 films. So I get confused. I, I couldn't tell you. It's, it's over 20. And then if you factor in, like, I'm just coming, coming off a year where I edited, um, four feature films, but I also edited two or three YouTube specials, plus trailers. So I probably did more editing this year than I've done in the past. Um, like somewhere in the neighborhood, it's like seven to eight hours of editing. So there was there was a lot that went on this year. It's hard to track. Yeah. Well, that's that's the biggest thing right now. That that never used to be an issue, but now that we're doing four feature films a year plus YouTube content, there's usually three to five things happening at any given time. Like we're doing planning. We're in the planning stages of like the BC trip, the British Columbia trip for next year. While we're editing, uh, we just finished editing Last Frontier. Um, do you want me to wait for a minute? Um, so we're, I just finished Last Frontier, literally last week. That's that's wrapped and off to the distributor, um, and we were shooting. Uh, Texas Dogman Triangle while we were in the early stages of editing that. So it's always, there's a, so many things happening at once. We'll be shooting recreations for one project while we're shooting the documentary part of another project. You know? And if you factor in the YouTube content, then it's a cluster. Like there's a, a dozen things happening. You got a small crew that you work with. Mm-hmm. It's like you have a huge production. Yeah. That's got to be intriguing. I guess it's good size to that as far as having friends and people you work with. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's a lot more pressurized. Yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't function the way we are now with the way we were doing things three years ago or even two years ago. Because um, now we have Alex and Eli are on staff. And then what that means is I can, it goes from being freelance guys that kind of are just doing a project that they're given to where like Eli will be editing two of the films this year. He'll help edit trailers. And then he's also editing two of the YouTube series. So like I can give people multiple projects to work on. Uh, Zach and Heather are on staff. Courtney's on staff. I'm on staff. And um, I've got a social media person coming on too. So there's... But, you know, if you compare that to, like, the Travel Channel, like, we're, yeah, it's, it's a very different scenario. But we're able to do so much more than your average, like, small um, indie production house, which we are. We're just an indie production house. But uh, what I've always been trying to do is build STM into a full-scale production company where there could be a dozen or more projects going at any given time um, and the ultimate goal uh, in the next year or two would be to launch our own channel um, like either a Ro like probably on Roku Amazon that kind of thing because we're getting to the level we needed to be at to, to launch something like that you got to have like 200 plus hours of content and we're getting to, to that point now with all the projects you've done, I'm sure I'm not looking to do anything negative, but mm -hmm. you know, any any project you've got there, some are hard or some are easy. What's been the one that's probably the most memorable for you that you enjoyed or that maybe thought you got more out of it than you expected? Yeah, well there's two that immediately come to mind. The Mark of the Bell Witch, shooting the recreations for that one was like one of the more creative experiences I've had. Just like a collaborative experience, there were so many people involved, and we did visually. I think that's our best movie. But uh, on the trail of Bigfoot, the journey 
where we went to the Adirondacks in New York. That felt like we were shooting like a National Geographic adventure film. Like it just, it, it, we were out in the woods, we were doing the, the, we were in the thick of it. I wish I could say Last Frontier, but Last Frontier we were all sick the first like five days in Alaska and then we spent two weeks trying to catch up on missing those first five days and it was a little, a little chaotic. Tons of driving, because Alaska is so big. We hit all four of the major regions, five of the major regions in the state while we were there. So there was constant driving, 17 interviews, so a lot of setups and B-roll and stuff like that. Really stressful, but yeah, on the trail of Bigfoot, uh, the, the journey is probably my favorite. Yeah, I'm, I'm amazed, uh, people don't realize <clears throat> how much work there is into any, even a small, good YouTube video, mm -hmm. how much B-roll Yeah. You can never have enough. No, and the way we, we're doing so many different projects, that you're gonna use that B-roll on something if you don't use it on the project you're working on. So we, we shot, when we shot on the trail of Bigfoot, the Discovery on, on the Olympic Peninsula, we we were there over a week, we were there about eight days, and we traveled all around, we did a big loop around the exterior of the Olympic Peninsula. And we shot 150, 200 B-roll shots at every location. Uh, over the course of those eight days. So each day we were coming back with 600 shots maybe, five, five, 600 shots. Um, and the movie only has like, I don't, know, I don't know an exact total, maybe a thousand shots, something like that. So that B-roll just, was just sitting there waiting to be used. And now we're doing Sasquatch Unearthed out there. So I can take all that B-roll we shot out there and use it within that series instead. So. That's been a big plus. We st we used footage from uh, Invasion on Chestnut Ridge that we shot all the way back in 2017 in uh, in the Ridge, the YouTube series we did last year. We were using B-roll from that. So yeah, tons of hours in the woods. So you uh, help support your channel with the uh, Kickstarter. Which mm -hmm. I'm yeah. Proud. Yeah. And, uh, so you want to talk a little bit about that as far as yeah. Um, Kickstarter's been a uh, well, Kickstarter is how we do what we do. We wouldn't, at this point, we would not function without the Kickstarter. Um, it gives us a third of our revenue, a four, uh, you know, either a third, usually about a third of our revenue for the entire year comes from Kickstarter. So that's how we, we fund pretty much everything we do. Um, we're, this year's launching on February 2nd. Uh, we're doing five titles within that Kickstarter and then uh, there will be like a ton of rewards that the backers get in return. Uh, but the big thing we're doing this year that we've never done before is um, we're launching a title that will only be available to Kickstarter backers, which is a like a feature-length Chupacabra movie uh, that we shot interviews with uh, Ken Gerhard and Nick Redfern and a witness in Texas, actually, while we're shooting Texas Dogman, which is something else we're starting to do is you... We'll film multiple projects during one shoot now too, which is kind of crazy. Um, so yeah, we've the Kickstarter is a big, big part of our future. There's so many tools out there. Mm -hmm. Discord, Twitch, and yeah, relatively new. Yeah, so something we we just talked about this past week that I think we're going to do this year or next year is launch a Patreon that would fund the production of the YouTube content onto physical media, so DVDs and Blu-rays, for like Beyond the Trail and The Ridge and that kind of thing. Because um, we get asked all the time if we're ever gonna put out Beyond the Trail or The Ridge or any of the YouTube stuff on DVD. And the audience demand isn't quite there, but there is a pretty large audience that would help support a Patreon that gave them that back in return. So we'll probably do that at some point this year or next year. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever done anything with cryptozoology in the title. Um, I love the title. I love that term. But yeah, you're right. It's a, I also don't think a lot of people know what that even is right now. Yeah. I use Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Mothman, you know. There's a, because there's a burgeoning audience that is only interested in like one or two of these things. Like Mothman has become this cultural figure. And that's, there's a lot of value just in that name. How cool for an area to have its own cryptic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So what do you have coming up and uh, you're really looking forward to with the most recent well, Jersey Devil just came out. Bloodlines, the Jersey Devil curse, just came out on Tuesday. We got On the Trail of Bigfoot, The Last Frontier coming out um, on January 17th. And, and then we have Texas Dogman Triangle, or the Dogman Triangle, coming out in conjunction with our book, The Texas Dogman Triangle. Those will come out together sometime in the spring. Um, on the Trail of Bigfoot, Land of the Missing. On the Trail of Bigfoot, The Origin, American Werewolves 2, and then the uh, Chupacabra movie. Uh, that's all the feature films on YouTube. We'll have Beyond the Trail, uh, Sasquatch Unearthed, and then uh, Eli Watson's new series, Mysteries and Monsters. There's a lot. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else you want to add in? That's it. All right. That's well, all I thank got. Thank you so much. I yeah. really appreciate you doing an interview with us. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for talking to me.